Hi there, I'm Melissa Nielsen. Welcome to this week's video. Today we're going to talk about being new to homeschooling. So in that, I'm not going to talk about if you're completely new to Waldorf. I'm actually just going to focus on families that understand something about Waldorf. Maybe you're coming from a Waldorf school setting or some other space and or you know, maybe you're homeschooling in some other way, but you're really, you understand a bit about Waldorf. You're just really trying to sort out how do I do the homeschooling bit? And is it possible to homeschool with Waldorf? First, I wanna say yes, it's absolutely possible. I've been doing it for a long time. My oldest child is 24 as of the recording of this. My youngest child is nine. We have five children in total. I have two children with special needs. This is absolutely possible to do at home. But it does take some work and some um, understanding. And in doing that, the biggest piece you have to understand is yourself understand yourself, learning about who you are, um, understanding your temperament, and then really pulling out those strengths that you have within your temperament. So often we look at temperament and we think that it's all about, you know, all the bad parts about our temperament. Oh, I have to overcome this or oh, I have to come overcome that, which yes, th there's, those things are there. But really, as you're walking this path, I want you to pull in your strengths. Look at your strengths. Every temperament has some really great strengths that are a huge asset on this path. So as you're walking through, this and understanding what do I do to homeschool so I want you to remember if you're like brand spanking and you're like I just decided five minutes ago to homeschool you, you will have some some journeys ahead of you here but the biggest things you want to understand are what are your state or country requirements so they are different depending on where you live um, you know I live in Arizona my rec my um, regulations are pretty easy I've lived in California again they were easy um, in California you either had to register as a pri as a private school which isn't scary it sounds scary but it's not you register as a private private school or join a charter school, which is a situation where the government gives you funds in exchange for you testing and that sort of thing. Um, there, I've lived in states where there were absolutely zero requirements and states where you just had to call the um, the local uh, school and let them know. So there are, there are many different regulations across the United States. Um, and then in other countries as well, there are some countries where homeschooling is still illegal. And for those families, we still have families that manage to somehow homeschool there. Um, but what I want to say is find out that piece first. If you find out that piece, then, you know, hop over into our um, our Facebook group. We have a Facebook group called Ask Melissa and Eric, and it's M-E-L-I-S-A, um, E-R-I-K with a K. Of course, we both have names that are spelled strange. Um, but hop over there if you've got questions and let us help guide you. Um, don't get afraid of... Or or don't be afraid of any of the regulations in the United States because they are doable. One of the things that we do when families come to us to work with our curriculum, sometimes they have to fill out government forms. They they have to, you know, they're trying to have an understanding of how to fill out forms. We try to assist in that. We can't do it for you because, you know, we're not an entity in that way, a legal entity, but we can guide you with sort of the things that, that we would put in those in those blanks. So that as you're walking forward, you um, have some confidence with that. I think that often the places where it's the most scary and the most nerve wracking is when you have to um, turn something in to the government, whether it be a portfolio or, you know, have somebody look over your work. I know there are states like Pennsylvania, you have to hire somebody. I think in Florida, you have to do the same. So go to um, the Homeschool Legal Defense um, HSLDA um, dot org website and look at what the requirements are for your state or just Google what are the requirements for homeschooling in Maine or New York or wherever you live. That is, that's a, a big piece of it right there. Once you have that done, then you can sort of have that in the back of your head as you're then navigating the next pieces of homeschooling. You know, when you homeschool with Waldorf, I highly recommend you choose a curriculum like ours where you have support. So we are the only curriculum. Waldorf Essentials is the only curriculum that offers the support that we do. So we have um, office hours four times a month where you get to come and talk to me or a coach face to face. We also have coaches on our team who are happy to, you know, email with you or answer questions via Facebook. That's what we do because I am very invested in your success. And it's not just from a business perspective. It's from a much deeper perspective than that. We really, really want this education to be for all. 
We want anybody who wants a Waldorf ed education to have one. So truly, if you've got questions and you're, you're challenged, ask for help. That's really what we're here for. And um, then we can help sort of direct you in the right ways. The other piece is if you're coming from, um, if you're coming from a, uh, you know, another setting to Waldorf homeschooling, we want to make sure that your placement is right. And, and this is sometimes so frustrating and I feel so bad when children have been misplaced in Waldorf settings and it happens like a lot. So if you're coming from a Waldorf school to homeschooling, do not be um, surprised if your child is, if your child was born April or May and they were not held until the next year to go to first grade, we will definitely recommend that you wait and we'll give you though guidance on what to do to get them in the right place and why is that important we have families that have been with Waldorf for years and they ask us why is that important it's important because the Waldorf curriculum is set up to match your child developmentally it's not about how fast you can go it's about how deep you go so we're going to go deeper so if you've got a child that maybe you're coming to Waldorf and your child has been in third grade in a Waldorf school, and now you want a homeschool, and I recommend to you, you know, say we've had a conversation and I say, well, I really think Susie Q really could benefit from another year of, of third grade. And you're heartbroken because you're thinking, Susie Q really needs to go to fourth grade. Susie Q really is going to be upset. But the school has put her in, the wrong, in a, a bad spot. So we're going to help you correct that. And, and you know, you don't have to take my advice. I People buy our curriculum all the time and don't take my advice. What often happens, like nine times out of 10, is a year or so goes by and they come back and they say, gosh, I really wish I had listened to you. I spent the last 18 months trying to figure out how to help Susie Q because she constantly feels like she's behind and she's struggling. And we don't want that for your child. We want to help you have them properly placed. So when we have a, you know, chat, in the email about placement or in office hours about placement, that's what they're for. They're for that very purpose. We really want your child to be in the right place for where they are in their lives. So I hope this was helpful. Um, if you've got questions, please leave them below in the comments. We're happy to, to answer them for you. We want to help. We want to help you on this journey. We really, really have this, you know, belief that we should be able to help anybody who needs this curriculum be able to have it. So much love to you. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you later.